Hello, Dr. Johnson here. Call me Dr. Helix if you want. But now we're going to look at some memes, uh, some video memes, and then, you know, maybe some, some movie clips. And we'll see what we think about them. So I haven't watched these before. These are going to be some raw reactions. If you can't handle the truth, you might need to look away. But we're going to go from here. All right, a little short one. mRNA, rRNA, and tRNA working together to make a protein. That's right, baby. We know that's the central dogma of molecular biology. You got the information in the DNA, comes out of the mRNA, but the other components that help ultimately translate it into protein are the ribosomal RNA and the transfer RNAs, and they're all working together. They aren't usually this cool. Well, actually, they are this cool. We just can't see. All right, so we're going to look at the preview for Contagion here. Hopefully this will be pretty good. I have not seen this movie. I'll tell you if I think it's accurate or not. Bridges, accurate. For any factory. Gwyneth Paltrow, very uh, accurate. The airport? No, she said she was jet lagged. Ooh, she looked flushed. I think she's infected the with something. The person touches their face three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, and each other. Dad, no, no, I, I go up to your room, honey. So we have a virus with no treatment protocol, and... Okay, so first of all, the thing that was spinning there, that wasn't a virus, okay? That was a protein. We saw some nice uh, beta sheets that looked anti-parallel. I just got a glance at it. No, oh, what we have is a virus. No, you don't get the structure immediately from a virus. You know, I don't know what the time frame is here, but, and that's one of the things. Oh, let's put this in this finoodle analyzer. Oh, boom, we know what it is immediately, but we don't know what it does. Bunch of crap. Okay, let's keep going. No vaccine at this time. No vaccine. It's a new virus they don't recognize. You had a seizure this morning, Beth. She before? had a history of seizures no, 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 and allergies. No. She's not using her goop products. You know, that's her company. Okay, we'll keep going now. As of last night, there were 32 cases. This is a little too close to home, I think. Unfortunately, you know? she did die. Right. I'm sorry I said many things about her. Mr. Omos, your wife is dead. What are you- Wait. It would be super cool if she came back as a zombie. But that's another, that's World War Z. If you haven't seen it, I actually really liked it. Huge, huge biology problems in that movie too. You don't become a zombie in five seconds and you don't chop off people's hands. Well, I guess you could. What are you talking about? Yeah, I what don't know. What happened to her? What happened to her? Is there any way someone could weaponize the bird flu? Is that what we're looking at? Someone doesn't have to. Yeah, exactly. This guy is exactly right. Someone doesn't have to weaponize it. This is going and killing people like that. He's right. You know, is there a way you can weaponize it? It's already weaponized. The bird flu. The birds are doing that. Birds are doing that. Watch this. It's transmission. So we just need to know which direction. Ooh. On day one, there were two people. And then four. And then 16. In three months. This is brilliant. That is how exponential growth works. Two, four, eight. Okay, we're going. It's a billion. That's where we're heading. They're calling out the National Guard. They're moving the president underground. People will panic. Get away! People will tip over. <laughs> the truth is being... So depending upon the incubation period and if you're infectious, as we all know now, and in fact, everyone knows this, right? We're moving the president. Well, you better put him in isolation and have everyone else isolated in this underground bunker for however long the incubation period is before you actually know whether there's a potential, especially for something like this that looks like it's killing everyone that's doing it. Luckily, SARS-CoV-2 isn't that that lethal. It is contagious, but it's not killing everyone that gets it. Kept from the world. Cook your samples, destroy everything. This September. I'm gonna use my voice. This September. In theaters. No. Contagion. I need you to get me the names of everyone who serves this room. It's an emergency. You can't panic now. I know. I'm gonna get you home. I got people too, Dr. Cheever. We all do. Don't talk to anyone. Don't touch anyone. Stay away from other people. That is an all-star cast. We're taking your car. We're not sick. Is anyone immune to fear? It's figuring us out. I have a huge commentary on that. I'm not going to do it right now. But yeah, fear plays a major factor into, into epidemics or even things that don't turn out to be epidemics. But yeah, this looks pretty cool. Uh, besides showing a protein that they wouldn't have had instantaneously, we'll, we'll go with it. This could, yeah, this is within the realm of possibility. So Contagion, haven't seen it, but the trailer, thumbs up. We can ignore some of the stuff that isn't accurate. In fact, that's what we have to do for all movies, right? Okay. So let's go. Ooh, Jurassic Park. This is this is one that I like. <laughs> so let's watch this little trailer here. This is from quite a while ago. Oh, 
it's the DNA. Oh, it's Mr. Really Hammond so explaining things to us. Just one drop of your blood contains billions of strands of DNA. The building blocks of life. A DNA strand like me is a blueprint for building a living thing. And sometimes animals that went extinct millions of years ago, like dinosaurs, left their blueprints behind for us to find. We just had to know where to look. Yeah, so up to this point, right? It's all good, right? Drop of blood, not the red blood cells, no DNA in those guys, but the white blood cells, yeah. You have multiple copies, you know, and, and I would have to do the calculations myself. But you could have millions and potentially, probably not billions, I always guess, but tons and tons and tons of copies of the DNA. So yeah, and if dinosaurs are like birds, and that's one of the premises of this movie, birds do have nucleated uh, erythrocytes or red blood cells. So then all of these cells would have it. And I don't know if dinosaurs do or not, but we'll, we'll go with that. So now they're going to show us how they actually get it, even though the dinosaurs have been extinct for tens of millions of years. A hundred million years ago, there were mosquitoes, just like today. A lot and bigger. just like today, they fed on the blood of animals, even dinosaurs. Sometimes, after biting the dinosaur, the mosquitoes... Now see, that's making me think of honey and making me kind of hungry. And get stuck so. in the sap. After a long time, the tree sap would get hard and become fossilized, just like a dinosaur bone, preserving the mosquito inside. This fossilized tree sap which we call amber, waited for millions of years with the mosquito inside until Jurassic Park scientists came along. Using sophisticated techniques, they extract the preserved blood from the mosquito and, bingo, dino DNA. Oh, so that last one, I'm going to back up to write that glowing thing because that's pretty cool. That's an old school method of DNA prep. No one does that now, okay? But this was back you know, in the 90s when this movie came out. I remember seeing it as an undergraduate, and I was a molecular biology major then, and I said, hey, this is possible. It's not quite as possible as I thought it was back then. We're in the genomic age now, and we know what it, what it would really take to make a complete genome. Uh, and they're going to explain how they get fragments of DNA, but then they fill in the rest with, uh, with amphibian, amphibian DNA. That almost certainly wouldn't work. And putting it in, putting in a whole genome's copy of DNA uh, into a... a, a an unfertilized or an anucleated amphibian cell or reptile cell, that probably wouldn't work either. But they're cool ideas, and we potentially could get there. So let's keep going here. Dino DNA. A full DNA strain contains three billion genetic codes. If we three billion base like pairs. These once a second for eight hours a day, it'd take two years to look at the entire DNA strain. It's that long. Since it's so old. It's full of holes. Now that's where our geneticists take over. Thinking machines. This is the part that and gene sequences it's a little fishy. break down the strand in minutes. And virtual reality displays <laughs> show our geneticists the gaps in the <laughs> that, that part kills me. Virtual reality displays. You just told us that flashing it across the screen would take two whole days of seeing these three billion base pairs, but we're going to take what looked like about 10, 10 base pairs of double stranded DNA and look at them one at a time there. And then, yeah, they just, virtual reality was brand new there. No one had it yet. You know, you didn't have your cell phones. You didn't have cell phones. If you did, they were bricks, right? But you didn't have cell, 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 cell phone headsets. So virtual reality was cool. That's why they stuck it in there. It's totally irrelevant here. So. The gaps in the DNA sequence. We use the complete DNA Here's our frog. The to fill in the holes and complete the code. And now. So one of the things is looking between even different types of frogs, you have total huge rearrangements of the genes, okay, different species. And so to fill in the holes, first of all, you don't know what goes together. Okay, you don't have something that's actually lining it all up to know where the holes are or how much you need to stick in there. And yeah, this is the part that's totally not within the realm of possibility, even, even today, you know, 20, 25 years later after this film. Uh, so there'd be, have to be a lot, of, a lot of innovation and new things developed to be able to, to, to do this part. Up to the point of extracting DNA, I'm not sure whether it's preserved in amber or not in mosquitoes. It could be. And you could definitely do, extract the DNA, and you could sequence the DNA and even put big sequences together. But to put it together in the whole genome, that's not going to happen. All right, well, that is going to wrap up our uh, our video reviews today, our little clips of these movies. I'm Steve Johnson. Call me Dr. Helix if you like, and I'll talk to you later.